shit. Oh shit. Oh, you didn't see, you didn't expect that motherfucker, did you? Alright, alright, calm down, Battlefield music. Calm down. <laughs> Get me too pumped up to play this game, and I gotta do a commentary. <laughs> so, by now, I'm pretty sure most of you have seen the patch notes for Battlefield 3, or at least the proposed patch notes. And there are a lot of really excited people and a lot of confused people. Look at this little mm, double kill right there, that's beautiful. Um, oh, before I get into the patch notes, let me bring up that I have made a glorious return to PC gaming for Battlefield 3. And before anybody gets upset, like, oh, Sergeant Mellor, does this mean we're never going to get to play with you again? No, that's not true. I, I appreciate both versions of the game. I appreciate the Xbox version for the sh just the sheer accessibility and amount of players that are on it. And you can't ignore the even playing field. But when you're playing for the PC, number one, graphics look outstanding. Um, but there's also the, uh, the the issue of the servers, and on PC the servers are better, and you can tell the hit detection. I mean, it's it's something that a seasoned player can notice, and you do notice, and so I appreciate it for the PC as well. So I'm not going to bring up a little war on which it's better for. Okay, like I said, I appreciate both platforms for what they offer, but let's go ahead and move on to these patch notes. So if you have not seen them yet, I made a video yesterday. And I have a link in there, and I had a couple thoughts on it, but a lot of people were like, well, you know, we want to know what your, what are some of your favorite changes? What are some of your opinions on some of the changes? And I'm going to get into some of my favorite ones. I think there are some issues that they did not address. I think, Jesus, they need to address, like the, uh, like the, the whole party system, guys, like the whole, the whole squad system, the fact that you can get put on different teams, put in different squads. Sometimes you don't even end up in the same game. The fact that they haven't addressed that yet, addressed that yet is is frustrating to say the least because that is what i believe is the biggest problem with battlefield 3 um, as far as new players being introduced to the game the seasoned players have learned to deal with it because we love this game so much but the newer people see this and they're like this sucks like i can't even get on the same team and they they stop it right there and it's a shame so i think they should have fixed that um but some of my favorite changes here are players now get up from prone slightly faster, which allows better odds of getting away from a grenade or just different threats. I love that. Okay, one of the biggest complaints is when I go to get up, it's like I have 100 pounds on my back. Now, don't get me wrong. The basic carrying load, I think, is 30 to 50 pounds on a soldier, which, which is fine. I understand it's not easy to get up with 30 to 50 pounds on you. I understand that. But <laughs> when you're getting shot at, your ass gets up and you move. <laughs> If a grenade lands right beside you, you don't go, well, let me casually get up right here and no, I guess I'll try and get away from... No, you're going to fucking move. <laughs> so I'm glad that they uh, that they addressed that. Uh, the next thing, uh, increase the spawn protection time from one second to two seconds. And that protection will still immediately get canceled as soon as the player moves or shoots. Now, a lot of people don't know about this. When you spawn in on a player, you have one second of invulnerability and it's usually involved in that black screen um, when you spawn in the player you have that black screen that slowly fades out uh, so one they're reducing that black screen time and they're increasing the time for invulnerability to two seconds which may not seem like a lot but that's enough for you to spawn in kind of get your handle on your surroundings and move it's not going to be a way to I don't think people could take advantage of a two-second invulnerability time when they spawn in. I mean, that's how long it takes you to kind of orient yourself to where you are and move. Um, a lot of people weren't happy with this. They are like, well, you know, it's supposed to be a little crazy when you spawn in. And, and that's true. So, I mean, there's two sides of that coin. So, take your opinion on it, whatever you choose uh, for an opinion on, on that particular topic. I kind of like it. Um, here's one of my favorite. The USAS-12. It is increasing the initial recoil 
reducing the total pellets fired from 12 to 9. And the UCS-12, since it has a higher rate of, shock, uh, rate of fire than other shotguns, they're hoping that this recoil change will better balance it. Um, now also, when you use the frag rounds, it's going to reduce the rate of fire even more. So guys, <clears throat> I am happy that they have addressed this. Now, will it fix it? I don't know. I really hope it does. <laughs> Look at this. I'm like, why can't I just sneak by this thing? <sighs> and I just go a different way. <laughs> but guys, yeah, the USAS-12, one of the most frustrating weapons, uh, I think, right now. You can tell when a team gets frustrated because they all switch to the USAS-12 with, with frag, frag rounds. Um, because it's just one of those point in the general area and shoot and people die kind of weapons. <laughs> oh, I love this glorious moment right here. I'm like, well, I see that guy. Oh, I guess I'll knife him. <laughs> and I was actually going to wait for him again like a little jackass, but I mean, he, he got smart. He didn't spawn back. But let's move on. Next thing that I like. The flash suppressor is getting some changes. Right now, the flash suppressor, it, it feels like there's no purpose. Yeah, it hides your muzzle flash, but I mean, come on. Who really cares about muzzle flash? Maybe on a night map, that might make, make some difference. Uh, but right now, people don't really find you through your muzzle flash as if you would in real life. Like, muzzle flash makes a difference in real life, okay? But in this game, people are paying attention to the map. That's how they find you. And, and through the sound. And it doesn't really reduce the sound like, it, like the suppressor does. Or the silencer, whatever you want to call it. The flash suppressor just reduces... Um, you know, reduces that, and and that's it. And makes a little bit less noise. So it's like one of those things. Like, why would I use the flash suppressor over the suppressor? Why would I do that? It makes no sense, considering that the fl the actual suppressor um, gets you off the mini map. So they're making some changes. They're making it so that it no longer reduces your accuracy for automatic fire. But you didn't know that um, when you're using the flash suppressor, it reduces your accuracy, which is like, come on, this sucks. Um, it also works as a recoil compensator, reducing the vertical recoil by a weapon by a specific value. So it'll depend on which, what it does for which weapon. I kind of suck here. Oh, <laughs> uh, well. Um, so yeah, it's going to do that, and a small hip fire accuracy penalty will be added uh, just because the attachment does make a weapon heavier. Um, so they're making that change, and I'm happy about that. So the flash suppressor might be a viable attachment to be using, um, cause it, it actually makes you a little bit more accurate as far as vertical recoil. So it, it might be a, a viable attachment for a lot of people. And I'm happy to see that because right now not many people use it. Um, the next thing that I'm really happy with the EOD bot can now spot enemies. That makes no sense from before, you know, <laughs> that you could not spot enemies with the EOD bot. Now you can, and I'm really happy about that. Um, the map will now be destroyed when running into a soldier or vehicle at high speed. Uh, now, it's still possible to strategically sacrifice your MAV on a soldier. It would just get destroyed in the process. Uh, MAV road kills were extremely annoying. You know, it was it was like you could hear them buzzing around the whole map. You had to watch your back, hearing them buzz around, hearing them trying to hit you. And it was just this really annoying fucking thing because they're hard to, they're hard to destroy when you have a good player driving them around. And that was really annoying, so I'm glad that they addressed that. Now, the last thing that I'm going to bring up... Now, there's a lot of changes, but I'm only going through a few of my favorite. Um, the M224 mortar can no longer get deployed in an area that is both... That is out of combat for another team. Um, which means that they cannot put this thing in an area that the enemy cannot get to. Uh, for example, their home base. Um, one of the things I really couldn't stand is when... A player would put this thing in their home base. There was no line of sight on the person, no way for you to reach them, and they would just sit there and mortar the entire game. That was both annoying from a teammate point of view and from an enemy soldier point of view. Um, and I'm happy that they addressed that. So that's all I'm going to bring up in this in this video, just some of my favorite changes. But what I want you guys to do is take a look at the changes and let me know what some of your favorite are. Or maybe you don't have a favorite. Maybe you have something that you're frustrated with. What, what changes... Uh, do you have opinions on? That's what I want you to put in the comment section. That's all I have for this video, guys. This is Sergeant Merrill, out here.